Warning, this video contains graphic topics of psychological abuse and infertility. Viewer discretion is advised. Part 23, who the fuck did I marry? So we agreed to do marriage counseling. Um, I had found a pastor and his wife who agreed to do our counseling, basically. Our counseling was going to be on Zoom and it was going to be every other week, um, every other Tuesday. Initially, Legion was um, participating in it. Um, his body language seemed to be that he was open and receptive to the marriage counseling. Now, the pastor and his wife were deeply concerned at the fact that we had only been married three months and we were already dealing with some form of infidelity. We were in marriage counseling and as the pastor would put it, there seems to not be any sort of intimacy. Um, they were concerned. Rightfully so, I think any person would be if they knew what was going on within those three months. So um, the pastor and his wife, it is, it is fair to note, we started counseling with them um, in the spring. We continued counseling with them up until a week before I found out what I found out and he got kicked out. So one of the first things that um, the pastor kind of talked to us about was, um, you know, are you, what, what was the deal with the Facebook messenger stuff? Um, and Legion was like, it was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. Um, it was just, it really was just attention and it just, I got carried away. He, he felt like he was not going to, he kept saying, I'm not going to keep apologizing. I'm not going to keep getting persecuted. Um, after I told you, I'm sorry, I told you I wouldn't do it again. And I want us to move forward. You're either going to forgive me or you're not. Pastor and his wife were like, wow, um, the audacity is real on this one. <laughs> so needless to say, we started moving slowly forward. Um, it was always in the back of my mind, just like it was in the back of my mind with that black Dodge Charger. It was one of those things where, okay, I see how you kind of are moving and operating. He came to me a few days after we started our first counseling session. And he was like, we should um, get a joint bank account. What he wanted to do was to each one of us have our own account and to get a joint account for our money to go in there um, for joint expenses. Now, up until this point, he had been paying the rent, the utilities, and I really was just paying for my stuff. So now he's suggesting, look, we're married now. Let's go ahead and get a joint account. I wasn't necessarily against it because I knew that I would still have my own account. I would still have my own savings. So what I countered with was, okay, let's take a look and see what we're working with. Show me your checking. Let's, let's look at each other's accounts. Look at what we have currently. He was cool with that. So he shows me his checking account. His checking account available balance was about, it was just over 9,600. Mine's was just over 1500 so there was a huge disparity in the amounts. Um, and so he logged in on the phone and turned it towards me, and I could see available checking, you know, available balance, just over 9600 I logged into my savings. I showed him how much I had in savings. He logged into, picked up his phone, da -da 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 -da, logged into his Chase savings, turned the phone towards me. In the Chase savings, it was roughly about 15000 But I also knew that he told me he had a U.S. bank savings and he had an offshore savings. So at this point in time, I asked him, show me the U.S. bank savings. Show me, show me the other two accounts. He would not do it. This became a huge bone of contention. He would not show me 
the two accounts that he claims has the most money in there, the accounts that he claims has money for a house in there, because he still was mentioning, hey, we need to get on this house thing if we're going to move um, when the lease is up. So I'm just adamant on, why aren't you? Why don't you want to show me your savings account? You showed me the Chase one, like what is the big deal? And so he kept saying, he was like, there's a lot of money in there. And he was like, and my uncle always taught me, this is not the uncle that died, another uncle. My uncle always told me, you know, j just keep your money tight because women can be, I said women, like we're married. So go ahead and show it to me. He would not show it to me. So then we went back into marriage counseling, like the next session and I bring it up. I said, he will not show me these two accounts that he claims has the money in there to buy a house. I told a pastor and his wife, I said, I saw the pre-approval letter. So I don't understand why he's not going to show me to just put me at ease that he has the money in there. I had never questioned it before because again, you tell me who in their right mind signs their name to a legally binding offer, an all cash offer on a house. And they, they just do it willy nilly. I don't know anyone that does that. So I actually never questioned what was in the savings because I clearly saw him sign his name to a $699,000 all cash offer on a house. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back to the parts in this playlist where I talk about what he did when we were looking for a house. So the pastor and his wife were like, Legion, that's not his name, y'all. That's a nickname. Legion, why would you why would you not show your wife your savings account? Like, what what's going on here? And so he made up some bullshit. And I remember the pastor's wife was like, something, something ain't right. And so at this point, Legion kind of shuts down. He's just like, look, y'all are not going to tell me when and where I can open. I open up my accounts to show anybody the money I earned. I earned that money. I earned that money by playing football, blood, sweat, and tears. He went to this whole Denzel Washington monologue about how he earned that money. And no one, no woman, no one is going to come in and tell him that he needs to open up the account. So then he starts talking about the ex-wife and how she tried to get money from him in the divorce back when they were in California. So now the pastor and his wife, their red flags are just like, whoa. So much so that the pastor's wife said, and I will never forget this. She said, I don't think you all are going to make it to January. What she was talking about is, I don't think y'all are going to make it a year. And I really truly was like, we're going to make it like, of course, we're going to make it. And she was just like, I don't have a good feeling about it. And so Legion's all defensive. He he at this point, he's folding his arms and he and because remember, we're on Zoom. He's folding his arms and he's just like, I'm I'm done with this. Like, I'm not going to get attacked because I'm not comfortable showing you the amount of money that I have. Money changes people. And I'm not comfortable. So he's playing that victim card. Um, and so the pastor and his wife were like, you know, we, we're, we're still going to help y'all as much as we can. But so he was like, I'm not comfortable. And basically the pastor and his wife were like, look, we'll help y'all as much as we can. <laughs> but there's some deep issues here. And you know, had you, this is what they advised us. Had the two of you came to us for premarital counseling, we would have told you, do not get married. Y'all should not even be together. That is what our, <laughs> that is what the pastor and his wife told us in marriage counseling. If you two had come to us for premarital counseling, we would have told you, y'all should not even be together, let alone get married. But here we are. So we will help you guys as much as we can. But the pastor's wife was like, I don't have a good feeling that y'all are going to make it a year. Part 24, 
who the fuck did I marry? So remember, we're in April. Um, we're now moving towards the end of April. And he still did not show me his um, savings account. Saw the checking. Saw the Chase savings. So he decides that we should start looking for a house again. Because my lease was up in August. And I made it very clear that when the lease is up, I am moving. I wanted to move to Cobb County. So um, he was like, you know, we need to get the ball rolling. I didn't want any parts of it. Didn't want any parts of it. He found a realtor. This time it was a woman. It was a woman. Um, and I believe her name was Amber. I think her name was Amber. So he found a realtor and um, kind of, we, you know, he told her what the budget was. Amber started finding houses. So please understand, or you don't really have to understand, but um, I believed, I believed he was a sane, rational human being sane enough that you would not sign a, an offer on a home if you didn't have the money. That's what I believed. So when we started working with Amber, Amber, I believe, showed us three or four houses. It was not nearly as many as the other realtor, Scott. So one of the houses... um absolutely loved. Oh, I love the house. Um, I really wanted to put in an offer on that house and I'm going to post it on the screen. The house love that house. It was just absolutely beautiful. And once again, he wanted to put in an all cash offer on the house, but before he could put in an all, he had told Amber, I want to put in an all cash offer. And what Amber, oh, the woman, was smart enough to say is, okay, let's just go ahead and take it one step at a time. Let's go ahead and get your pre approval stuff together. She said, I work with a great lender who, if you if you're not already pre approved, um, he can get you pre approved, no issues. Um, and then if you want to do an all cash offer, then we'll go ahead and get the proof of funds together. So that way we can submit it all with your offer. Jesus. Y'all already know what happened. Cause you remember what happened on the last house with Scott. Um, basically Legion was like, well, I can get you whatever you need. That's fine. But... I really don't want to submit proof of funds unless they accept the offer. Amber, and I don't know where she is. I don't even know if she'll ever see this video. Um, anyway, let me keep going and I'll explain why that woman has a special place in my heart. So Amber was like, you know, I totally understand. Um, but this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to need that paperwork, okay? And um, we'll submit it with your offer. It, she she just simply was like, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. And so he did not submit the paperwork um, when she had asked him to. And I remember I was driving to work and I stopped at the quick trip on Upper Riverdale Road in Riverdale, Georgia. And Amber had called me. It was it was in the morning. She had called me. Um, and I believe with all my heart that Amber knew something was up, but she also knew I did not know what was up. So she called me and she was like, I just don't understand. Like, if he has the paperwork, like you can submit the paperwork, but the issue was the Chase paperwork that I had was from a year prior. So my understanding was that it pretty much was no good at this point. Um, 
So she said, he can, all he has to do is just email it to me or take a picture of. She was like, I just need to know that he's able to back up his offer. And I said, I totally get it. Um, and she was explaining some stuff to me. She was like, you know, he needs to do X, Y, and Z. And so I said to her, I remember I said, I don't know what's going on. I said, um, I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, but I don't know what's going on. And so let's put a pause on this whole thing. Let's put a pause on looking at houses. Let's put a pause on um, getting his pre-approval letter because I'm not sure what's going on. And she got quiet and she said, okay. I said, and I know this sounds weird. And she said, no, she said, that is actually very smart. She said, "Um, do your research. And if I can be of assistance, call me. She said, whether you buy a house with him or you buy a house on your own, I will be more than happy to represent you. I don't know where Amber is today, but that one sentence, I felt like, I felt like just woman to woman, she was basically telling me something ain't right baby something ain't right and now you need to open your eyes I'll be more than happy to work with you um if y'all get your shit together I'll work with both of you but whether you buy a house or not do your research and then let me know what I can do that was our conversation at the quick trip on Upper Riverdale Road so I got off the phone Um, that was the last time that we worked with any sort of real realtor. That was the last time that we looked at any sort of house. Um, and I don't know, I don't remember exactly what happened after that meeting that day. I do know that when I went home, I simply told him, I don't want to look at a house right now. Um, I said, I think it's okay if we rent. Um, we'll just find a house in Cobb County and just rent um, for a year. And let's, and let's build, you know, f- save some more money. Let's just, um, let's not worry about buying a house right now. And basically what I was trying to do was save face. Because that was the first time with Amber that I actually was embarrassed at the fact that we're wait we he and I because I felt like I was complicit in the fact that I'm going to look at houses with him. I felt like we are wasting these people's time. I did not mean to waste your time. I clearly see my time as being wasted, but that doesn't mean I need to waste your time. And I felt embarrassed at the fact that we wasted her time um coming across as serious buyers when time came to put up or shut up nothing was put up and I knew nothing I had nothing to add to the to to add to this because we're talking about a $650,000 house and you know I'm I'm I don't make that I don't make anywhere near that so it it just became one of those situations where I was trying to save face I was trying to save face with my husband and I was trying to save face with Amber. And so I did say to him, let's just rent for another year. And then let's see um, at that time where we are, if we should go ahead and buy. So now is when shit is about to get real. Part 25, who the fuck did I marry? So... We weren't looking at houses anymore. We were not working with a realtor anymore. The end of April, I had decided that I wanted to look for another job. I did. The reason I wanted to look for another job is petty. Yeah, it is. I wanted to look for another job because I was pissed off at the fact that um, 
I had basically was dependent on him to help with the car note. So I wanted to look for another job where I could afford life all by myself, including that car note, basically where I would make more money. I told him that I was going to start looking for another job. He laughed. And his exact words were, you're not going to leave Georgia State Patrol. He was like, I swear you love them niggas more than you love me. He laughed. So that fueled me even more. So I was hitting the pavement hard trying to find another job. I was applying to all kinds of places. Got a phone call um, from my current job. So this is how I ended up in my current job. Got a phone call um, They and they had sent me an email with a background packet. The background packet was long and extensive, but in the background packet, it asked for my spouse's full name, my spouse's date of birth, and my spouse's social security number. So I showed it to Legion and I was like, I need your social because, you know, I'm applying for this job. It's a great job. It's way more money. Um, and, you know, we're talking about moving anyway to Cobb County. So this, you know, this, this is a God thing. He did not want to give me his social. I explained, I, I showed him the paperwork where I was like, look, because we are married, I, I can't lie on here. So help me. <laughs> um, so he writes down his social security number on the background packet. And um, I eventually turned it in. I had scanned it, saved it in my email, and, and sent it in. And I looked at it one day, be, just going through it, just making sure I didn't really miss anything. All T's were crossed, all I's were dotted. And I looked at his social, and something about the social seemed different then the social security number that I remember seeing when we did our marriage license. And so for those who you remember in the previous part, I said I had ran his social security number from the marriage license. Nothing came back. So I thought that I had written it down wrong. Basically, what it is, is that the first three numbers were different on the background packet than what was on the marriage license. If you don't know this, here's a little trivia. Your social security number, the first three numbers, pretty much are dictated by the state you were born in and the state that issued your birth certificate. So he was born in Pennsylvania. So his social, the first three letters, excuse me, the first three numbers of his social security number should be attributed to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, shit, they probably got like five, six different numbers, uh, three-digit numbers that your social security number can start with. So the social that was on the marriage license, for example, um, was probably one, two, three. What was on the background was four, five, six. Both of those social security three-digit prefixes are issued through the state of Pennsylvania. Again, this is an example so I can make it clear. So when I saw his social on my background, I immediately knew that was a different social than what I saw on the marriage license. Um, and when I compared, because I, I had found a copy of the marriage license that we turned in because I had filled it out on the computer. So... Sure enough, the first three numbers were different. The rest of the numbers were the same. So one of two things, either when I ran his background, I did in fact put in the wrong number or the number on the mayor's certificate or the um, background packet is wrong. So I decided that I was going to roll the dice and take the social from the background packet. Again, this is the background packet that I had to fill out to get my current job. I was trying to get a new job. Okay, so I took that social and I ran a background check on it. 
What came back on this particular background were was all the addresses that the social security number, I guess, had been um, attached to. So all of the addresses, the states were Georgia, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. What I did not see was California. So I thought that was weird. I thought, okay, maybe this is not a complete background because clearly he went to San Diego State. It's on his resume. It's on it's on quite a few things. Social media. He didn't have a LinkedIn, but it was on his social media. So clearly he had he had been to California. So maybe I just need to do a different background check. Also to note during this time, he, um, I think I told you guys, he had hit his leg at work. So what was happening was it was getting more and more difficult for him to walk, like put pressure on that leg, on that knee. Um, he was still able to go to work. He was, he was still leaving at 6.15 in the morning. He was still coming back between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. But I clearly could see where he was in pain. Um, he would elevate the knee, ice the knee. It was, it was getting worse. And I was constantly like, go to the doctor, let me take you to urgent care so that they can look at this knee because you shouldn't still be limping and having a hard time, um, putting weight on that knee. And every single time he was like, oh, you know, it's it's fine. I have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday. The doctor just told me to ice it and to elevate it. Um, this, hap- this is an old football injury. It happens all the time. It used to happen a lot when I was out in California. So I'm mentioning this knee issue for a reason. Um, but back to the background. So once again, when I ran the background the second time with a second social, It showed me states of Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. And that is all this, that's all that I saw in terms of addresses. I didn't see anything for California. So by this point, we're moving into May of 2021. Things are starting to reopen. One of the things that reopened was San Diego State. So I called San Diego State. I called the registrar's office. Registrar's office. Um, someone did answer, and there was there was um, instructions on how to request a transcript. Um, I was able to try to request it online. You needed the person's the student's name, and I believe you also need their social. And when I typed it in, it said no results found. Um, I believe that I sent an email asking, you know, this person is is saying that they were a student there. Can you verify it? The response I got was there were no records found with that social security number. (laughs) So I'm like, okay. I asked him about it. And in part 26, I'll tell you exactly what his response was. Part 26, who the fuck did I marry? So I asked Legion, what's the deal about San Diego State? He was like, what are you talking about? And I said, "Um, why is there no records of you there? (laughs) I just came right out and said it. Without missing a beat, this man said, well, I was a private citizen. What the fuck does that mean? And what he said is that when he started at San Diego State, his father paid money so that, okay, it's important I'd say this with a straight face. His his father paid money so that his name and social would not be publicized and he would be considered a private student, a private citizen. Um, He said that he had a card where all he had to do was show the card. He does not have to give his name. He does not have to give any information because he had that card. 
he said so San Diego State would not public would not have any record of him but he was in fact a student there I said and you claim that you played football he was like I did play football I said so you're saying that the school did not publish your name anywhere and they were in violation of NCAA rules and he was like why are you asking all these questions and I said, I'm just curious. I'm just, meh, meh, I'm just curious. You're saying that you were a private citizen, but yet how did you, how were you in compliance with NCAA if you were a private citizen and they did not publish your name on any roster? So that was his excuse. He was like, all I can tell you is that I was a private citizen. My dad paid for it. Okay. So now I know that San Diego State has no record of him. Now I know that his social security number, at least the one that's on my back, my background packet, only shows that he listed in he excuse me only shows that he lived in Georgia, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. Okay, so at this point, the pain in his knee is getting worse. Uh, it's getting to the point where when he would come home from work, he would take a shower and immediately get in bed, elevate his knee. He was, he was not even eating, um, the way that he used to eat. It was getting to the point where at times, um, if you remember when I told you all about the miscarriage, they gave me pain meds because I had taken that pill but the pain meds I was allergic to, so I couldn't take them, but I still had them. So the pain in his knee was getting to the point where he would take one of those pain meds just to get through the night. He was constantly in agony, constantly kind of tossing and turning, so much so that in May he moved into the guest bedroom because I couldn't deal with the tossing and turning thing. And he just said he was more comfortable there. So... What what at first was a, oh, I hit my knee at work, turned into, no, it was an old football injury. This has happened before. Turned into, you know, it's painful for me to walk on it. Turned into, it's, it's actually hard for me to work on it. Um, but he was, he was still going to work at 615 every morning and coming home between 330 and four. So, um, it is... Again, I'm just giving you guys the chronological order of how all this happened. So at this point, we're not looking at we're not looking for a house. Um, I still have not seen the two savings account. I'm pretty sure there's no money in those savings accounts. But again, he was going to put in an all cash offer with Amber, the real realtor. So. I really didn't know what to believe, but I I believed what I saw, which is I saw that that background is not showing where he went to California. So at one point in May, it was close to mid-May, he calls me from work. He calls me from work, calls me while I'm at work and tells me that he got a phone call from his stepson. The phone call from his stepson the stepson was crying and was just absolutely distraught. And I'm at work in my office like, what's going on? And he says to me that the stepson informed him that his stepdaughter passed away. That she died from COVID. The stepson, found, this is the story. The stepson found her in her apartment because they had not heard from her for a couple of days and she was unresponsive he called the ambulance they pronounced her dead when she got to the hospital so he was calling to tell me that she had died um and he was also calling to ask me if i would object to him giving his ex-wife two thousand dollars towards the funeral as I've stated before and I and I still am this way to this day I don't play about death 
So when he told me that she died, I immediately went into the, all right, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, whatever we can do to help, let's help. Because surely nobody would make that up. So he, he again, he was like, are you, are you okay with that? He was like, we're married. And the agreement was that anything over $500, would be a discussion. So 2000, definitely. And I said, yeah, I said, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, he was upset because again, he was close with the kids and my heart went out to his ex-wife. It did because I, I can't even imagine. I cannot even imagine. So Focus on me, baby. Can you focus on me?